today I'm going to show you how to stake a tree. Well, how to plant a tree and how to stake a tree. Now I've got a beautiful hawthorn tree. Hawthorns are one of my favorite trees. It's a native tree. It's perfect for a small garden, even though I've got lots of space here. Um, and it's often grown in hedges as well. You can see it growing in this hedge here. There's lots of it because it's brilliant for local wildlife, for white, native wildlife in the UK to plant a native tree is always really beneficial. It flowers in May time as well, which is when my birthday is. So it always reminds me of my birthday month. It's really lovely. But first of all, I need to remove the turf. Now this tool is a crumple edging tool and they're really made of sturdy stuff. You can edge lawns with them, obviously, but they're also brilliant at lifting turf. So it's just a matter of cutting into sections like that. Now, turf can also be rotted down to make a really good soil enricher. So if you lay them upside down and stack them on top of each other, they will soon over time really rot down and create a lovely crumbly mixture that you can use to mulch and enrich soil or add to multi-purpose composting plant pots, things like that. So never get rid of it, always keep it if you've got the room. Now if you come across any bits of big rubble like this, it's really important just to get rid of them because we don't want our new roots of the tree hitting things like this. We want them to have as much space and room to kind of stretch out, really anchor themselves in the ground. Let's go to one side. Okay, so this is my tree. Are you going to stay up? It's a bit top heavy. And a good way to measure how deep it needs to be, the hole needs to be, is to use your spade. So I know it's got to be a couple of inches deeper than the top of my spade. And I know that it's got to be a couple of inches wider than the top of my spade. So I'm not quite there yet. So I've added some homemade compost and leaf mould into the bottom of my planting hole. Now there are two schools of thought on this. Some people think that you shouldn't add anything to the bottom of the planting hole because it then encourages the tree to go looking for its own nutrients really quickly. But this isn't the best time of year to be planting a tree. It's in full leaf or in the middle of summer. The best time would be autumn or during the winter time. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a helping hand um, to get settled in nice and quickly by giving it a bit of food. So I've just put a bit in the bottom there. Now in buying a tree, it's really important that you check that it's well rooted all the way to the bottom of the pot. So when you buy it, look at these holes in the bottom of the pot and if you can see it's white roots, you know it's rooted all the way to the bottom of the container. That way, you know, it's got a good root system on it. Now this one is looking really healthy. I'm just gonna gently kind of tease those roots a little bit out at the bottom. Not too much because like I say, it is summertime, so it's not the best time to be planting a tree, but as long as it's kept well watered, it'll be absolutely fine. And then I'm gonna... Now it's important as well, when you buy a tree and when you plant a tree, that you place it correctly. Believe it or not, trees do have sides, better sides than others. And from this side, you can see it's been grown against a fence or something at the nursery and it's not quite as full and bushy. And I want it to be nice and full and bushy from this angle. So I'm gonna turn that flatter side to the hedge. A bit more. There we go. And then you keep standing back and having a look. Yeah, that's much prettier from there. And now it's just a matter of filling back the hole with the soil that you took out. Now it's really important that it's firmed in really, really well. So just do that with the heel of your boot. Let's go all the way around. Oh, 
and that's to prevent the root ball moving around because any movement in that root ball will mean that you get a really weak growth in the tree. We want it to be a really strong tree. So it's really important that it's firmed in really well. Now around the top of that, I'm going to mulch with some more homemade compost and leaf mould. And the worms will take that down to the roots where it's needed over the coming weeks, meaning as long as it's kept well watered, it should stand a great chance of becoming a really beautiful tree. Now, one of the lovely things about this tree is that unlike lots of blossom trees, it gets blossom at the same time as its new foliage, so you get both on the tree, not just the blossom. And the contrast of the deep, deep pink of this, this variety is called Crimson Cloud, has a really deep pink outer and the white centre and against the new lime foliage is just majestic tree. Uh, brilliant for wildlife, brilliant for small gardens, it doesn't get too tall and a British native so there's nothing much not to like about it. And now it's time to stake the tree. Now if it's a really young tree it might be perfectly happy not being staked. However this is a quite a windy spot the wind blows down the valley here and kind of right up this section of the garden and you can see now as the wind comes it will push the tree this way and you can see all the trees around actually kind of slightly leaning over to the left. So in order to give it some support you put your stake in against the prevailing wind so it goes in this way and it needs to be on a 45 degree angle so it aims away from the root ball. Now the stake is in, it's nice and secure. It wants to be buried to about 75 centimetres, so it's really in and sturdy, it's not going anywhere. Now for my tree tie. Now I've just got one of these. They're re readily available. And you want to tie it round the post and through, and then round the tree and through. So it's a figure of eight. And the reason that you do this is so it creates a nice buffer between the stake and the tree because if the tree and the stake rub onto one another when it's really windy you can create wounds on the tree and that's how disease gets in so you want this kind of nice a bit of flex but a nice buffer in the middle so the two don't rub against each other and that's against the prevailing wind so it should really support it from bending and flexing too far over to the left and now it's anchored it should get its roots in nice and securely be a very happy tree now staking like this is really useful if you've got a sloping site or a windy site like this one is or a young tree now if you've got a really big tree to plant you will need a lot more substantial stake um, so depending on the size of the tree depends on the size of the stake you also might want to use two stakes so what you would do is you'd put a stake at this side of the root ball here and then a stake at the other side of the root ball tying them together with a tree tie creating a letter H formation. So it goes straight from this stake to the tree and then from that stake to the tree. So it's really straightforward, but again, it just means that that large tree, which is a bigger canopy, has lots of support to keep it really anchored. And it's important to keep your eye on the tree tie because obviously the girth of the tree as it grows will get wider and you don't want it to restrict or create any cuts or abrasions around the trunk. So it's important to keep your eye on it and if it needs loosening every year then do so and once it's been in three or four years you can probably take the tree tie off and it will grow away happily because its roots will be down and it really is as simple as that now if you've got any more videos or ideas for videos that you want us to do then please do get into our media team because we want to provide really useful content and for any more how-to videos visit lovegardening.com